for joining us. You're welcome, Alexa. I think, first of all, we've got to say these are, these are tough images to watch and uh, right. for people who've been watching since this began. Uh, around 8.30 this morning, and of course for those who are just tuning in, this definitely leaves your average American feeling that, uh, boy, we thought perhaps that uh, you think, I guess, you're untouchable, pretty right. feeling very susceptible at this yeah. moment. That feeling of safety has been shaken dramatically, and so I'm sure some people, many people, in fact most people are probably in shock or some form of it just watching these terrible images and trying to understand the magnitude of this disaster. An, an incredible sequence of horrific events beginning with the New York World, uh, World Trade Center this morning. Uh, and obviously a very tough time for people who are wondering uh, about loved ones who may have been on certain flights, who may be traveling now. That's right. Uh, what, what kind of advice would you, would you have for them? Well, obviously they need to find out as much as they can and just wait for the information to filter out of the chaos. And I think the thing to do is to be in touch with family and others that you can reach and just get that family network, that network of friends and family and others together so that you share the strength of the family. Call on those people that you know can, can help and share and, and then just I think the best thing to do is, is wait and try to keep that communication going as much as you can. I think it's very tough right now because we are still, we, we haven't even begun really to deal with the aftermath of these, of these terrorist attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C. Right now, of course, fire crews are frantically um, trying to get rescue efforts uh, underway at the Pentagon, um, at the now collapsed World Trade Center towers. Of course, the question is eventually going to be, how do we heal the hurt now? Right. Where do we go from here? Right. Well, there's a of course a condition that many people have heard about called post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. and it often will come up as as a result of something as horrific as this in fact that's part of the definition a survivor or someone who has witnessed or been part of something as tremendously upsetting as this kind of event and that the symptoms of that condition take many forms flashbacks to this kind of thing just uh, remembrances of the images that one has seen psychic numbing, uh, loss of affect, persons can't experience joy because of the, 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 the impact that it's had on their psyche. And these things take time to sort out. And people who have, have suffered directly from this obviously should be in treatment as quickly as they can, mm -hmm. seek some professional help to get, help them go through this. One of the best things, as I mentioned earlier, though, is just working with family and friends, right. staying in touch with those who, have, who are sharing the grief. That helps more than anything. You know, Dr. Zucker, I don't know about you, but as, as, as we view these, these horrific images, I can't help but flash back to the Oklahoma City bombing in That's 1995, right. of course. And uh, the World Trade Center bombing, and, and of course, the World Trade Center bombing right. in 1993, which did kill six people. Um, but again, we have those images of the Oklahoma City bombing. Uh, and of course, a, a slightly different situation as that was, um, we know now, done by an American. Right. What did we learn from that situation that uh, that could possibly in any way be be applied here? And, and what are the implications going to be for our country after this terrorist attack? Well, I think, as, as we mentioned earlier, one of the things that will be shaken most profoundly is our sense of safety. Right. That we somehow, because of geography, because of technology, because of our sophistication, that somehow we are immune to these kinds of things. This, of course, negates that thinking and right. makes us realize how vulnerable we are. And I think that's going to have that, that's something that, as, as a nation, psychologically, we'll have to deal with, as well as individually. Well, right now, um, obviously feeling quite vulnerable in Texas, street access to the state capitol building has been shut down. Uh, people are still in the capitol and still walking around the capitol. Uh, we have had no comment yet from Governor Rick Perry, but, but we can tell you um, on our home front that he has canceled all of his travel plans. Um, we can also tell you that extra security vehicles have been have been posted outside the Capitol in Austin, um, heightening security here in Texas. Um, again, out of fear of that that vulnerability that that you know after seeing what we saw today, you certainly never know. That's right. Any parting thoughts, uh, Dr. Zucker? I think, as I said earlier, I would just uh, encourage people who are close to this, who may have family involved in this, that they should. Um, should rally around one another and just provide the kind of support that only families and loved ones can give until the, the details are known. It may be some time before that happens. I think the waiting may be the most difficult thing to do. And I would just encourage folks to, to be in touch with those who can help them. 
ministers, clergy, uh, others who have that kind of skill, I think should uh, should be available if we can do that. Obviously, we're going to be doing that for our students here at the University of Dallas, and I would encourage all of us in those professions to be available, to be on call, to help when they're needed. Dr. Zucker, we certainly thank you for your insights uh, this morning, for spending some time with us. Certainly do appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Zucker. Let's go ahead and listen in again to CNN. Washington, but we do know that another plane has crashed this one about 80 miles south of Pittsburgh, or at least to the southeast of Pittsburgh. Rose Arce, one of our producers here uh, in New York, joins us on the phone. Rose, what do you have that's new? Yes, uh, just a, a while ago, I think you saw that uh, collapse of the top of the, of the World Trade Center. Well, it looks like a large chunk of that debris has hit a building very close by, about two blocks away next to an elementary school, causing another explosion. So for the last few minutes, I've been watching people running from that direction. There was one man, well, I'm not sure, you saw on the street. I've seen several emergency service workers carrying other emergency service workers from the scene. There's a, there's a haze everywhere. It's very, very difficult to see, but there has been a, the whole area has been covered by soot and ash. I said it looks almost like snow. So as people are coming up the street, running from the scene of this new explosion, you can see them slipping on the, on the uh, ash and, and literally having to drag each other up the street. There's an incredible amount of panic down here in downtown Manhattan as people are realizing that they really need to leave the area and entirely after spending the last hour or so just watching this from afar. Rose, stay with us. Terrific work. Let me throw uh, another couple of pieces of information out as we continue to, uh, to put this all together into a straight line if we can. Uh, the United Nations has been evacuated. The United Nations building on the east side of Manhattan has been evacuated. The city is in, uh, this is election day, a primary election for mayor and city council races here in New York. That election has been postponed until further notice. Um, obviously, we are, we are in the middle of an extraordinary catastrophe that started about 8.45 Eastern time here in New York when one plane crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. About a half an hour after that, as people were converging, as fire and police and rescue teams were converging on the scene, a second plane appeared uh, to the west of the Trade Center buildings and slammed into the second tower. That's what you just saw, fire shooting out the north and east side of the tower. Uh, Shortly after that, we began to get reports of events taking place in Washington. Uh, an explosion which first came to us as a fire at the Pentagon. Now there's a report of a second hijacked plane heading towards the Pentagon. It is believed that one of the planes, perhaps both, but one of them we have been told was an American Airlines 767 that hit one of the Trade Center towers. About a half an hour after that, perhaps a little bit longer, lose track of time a little bit in these situations, the first tower, or the, uh, let me correct that, the south tower, the second tower, uh, the one to the left collapsed. Uh, it collapsed in a cascade of smoke and spark. And what we cannot tell you is if there was a second explosion uh, that caused that collapse or if it was simply that's the first one. That's the uh, south tower collapsing. Um, and that was about a half hour, give or take, after the planes hit the tower. Then shortly after that, just as the smoke was starting to clear away, the second tower, and that's what you're looking at now. Again, this was not very long ago, 10, 15 minutes ago, the second tower. It almost looks, it almost looks like one of those implosions of buildings that you see, except there is nothing controlled about this. This is devastation. How many people? There are 50,000 people who normally go to work in the Trade Center buildings. How many of those people had arrived already? How many of those people were trapped in the upper stories? How many of those people have been hurt? How many of those people died? We cannot tell you now. We can tell you that hospitals throughout the New York area are receiving literally hundreds of patients. Uh, as, as, and they are performing triage. They are trying to figure out who could be treated, who needs help first. This is sort of standard operating procedure. We are just being told now that Israel has evacuated 
all its diplomatic missions around the world. Uh, Israel has evacuated its missions. We are told now that Yasser Arafat has condemned these attacks, and we don't know yet who's behind them. Britain has condemned these attacks. Germany has convened its National Security Council, and we will check and see if events are going on in those places or if that is simply a reaction to what has gone on here in, in Washington and in New York. CNN's Gene Meserve joins us on the phone from Washington. Gene. Hay Street, which is one of the major thoroughfares here in Washington, it is absolute gridlock. It takes about... We are now about to be joined by Eileen Holly from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Eileen, can you hear us? I can hear you. Eileen, I understand that um, about 5,000 employees there are about to be evacuated from the building. Can you tell us what's going on there? Well, fortunately, nothing is going on here in Houston. We've received right. no threats of any kind against the Johnson Space Center. But in the light of today's activities against uh, government employees and government facilities, we're taking the prudent course of action here. We are closing the center, and we are sending all of our employees home. Eileen, this is Tracy Johnson with TXCN. We also have um, received word that there is a space shuttle in orbit, and what's interesting is that we were hearing that as it was passing over, like, the New York area, it could actually see what was taking place. You know, I don't know. It's actually the International Space Station, which is always in orbit uh, right. currently. We do have a three-person crew on board the space station. I have not uh, heard from them if they actually could see any of the damage, and I'm being told now that, yes, they could see okay. uh, the damage. Um, they have, of course, been advised uh, of what is going on currently here on the ground, and they have been advised that everyone is evacuating the center here mm -hmm. in Houston as a safety measure. Well, Eileen, by closing the control center, what does that mean for the space shuttle that is in orbit? Does that affect it in any way? or? Uh, no, the space station will be just fine. Um, honestly, I could not tell you whether we will maintain a skeleton staff here. They can also maintain communications through the control center that's located outside of Moscow because, of course, this is an international partnership. So uh, their activities will largely be unaffected uh, by all of this, and we will continue to give them information because they're going to have a keen interest in this. Eileen, as, as, as your thousands of employees are evacuated there from the Johnson Space Center in Houston, of course, what is the feeling there among the employees? I think along with everyone else uh, throughout the country, they're, they're probably stunned and outraged uh, by the attack. Things here are very calm. People are simply, we've told all of our folks that they need to go home. Uh, they need to check with friends and family on the East Coast. If they feel like they need to do that, uh, we're offering, of course, the assistance of our employee assistance program for employees who are deeply affected by this. But mm -hmm. uh, by and large, there's no sense of panic here. There's no right. sense of urgency. This is just, uh, it's the prudent thing to do. We owe our employees that level of care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Eileen, thank you very much for joining okay. us. Thank you very much. And of course, there are some other uh, safety precautions that are being taken in Texas in the wake of uh, this sequence of, of, of terrorist attacks and destruction. Um, streets leading to the Capitol in Austin have been shut down. Governor Rick Perry has canceled his travel plans. Um, heightened security there, of course, as well as we just learned that uh, at the World Trade Center in Dallas um, that they have asked their employees to leave. Again, as, as, Eileen, as Eileen Hawley was, was reiterating that it's, it's, there is no threat here, but it's just, again, a security measure that, uh, that they do want to take. Absolutely. And then we also have word that a large plane has crashed. That was just about uh, around 10 a.m. Now, that's Eastern time. Um, about eight miles east of Jennerstown, um, there was a 911 report that came in, and that airport is about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. And that's all the information that we have at this time. Of course, we'll bring you more as we are aware of the situation there in Pennsylvania. And, of course, President Bush was in Sarasota, Florida this morning reading to some school children when he first learned the news he did um, get a chance to to speak about uh, what, what he has said now are terrorist attacks as for governor rick perry we have learned that he'll be speaking around noon and of course we'll try and carry that live for you here on texas cable news uh we want to talk a little bit about what, what governor uh, rather what president bush said as he is now on his way um perhaps back to washington back to washington dc but he said that uh, of course terrorist attacks will not be tolerated. Let's go ahead and, and listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at uh, Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. 
two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country.